Hey. And uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, this is day uh, three, recording three. Mm -hmm. And today we're with one of our good friends, Emma. She's joining us from Sofia, uh, where she's also under quarantine. <laughs> <laughs> and today uh, we thought it would be interesting to talk about uh, labels, uh, how you identify sexually. Um, and some of the misconceptions, misperceptions that kind of come around with this. Uh, for example, uh, labeling somebody as gay or bisexual or whatever, you should definitely not be uh, basically putting that label onto someone else uh, and really just, you know, um, what do I want? Where did I want to go with this? <laughs> um, just like we're going to be talking with Emma because, uh, for example, I believe that she said that she in Vansko identifies one way and in Sofia identifies another way. And we're just going to be talking with her a bit about that. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe actually instead of me introducing Emma, she can introduce herself because she has a lot more of a grip on this <laughs> than we do. So Emma, take it away. Uh, hi. Thanks for the intro. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, I don't, this idea of labels, exactly. It's quite a funny one because people always want to label me. It's true. I, uh, I am interested in men and women, but I don't actually identify personally as bisexual. And actually, in a way, nothing before you started, we started this talk, of course, we were talking a little bit about those labels. And I said, if anything, I would, I, I would say I'm pansexual. But even that I'm not, I'm not, it's not like an identification, if that makes sense. Mm. So yeah, I think it's a good topic to think about, because we so easily go into defining other people's sexuality. Because it's easy, of course. Yeah, we project. Just, yeah, we we just like to put people into boxes and label them as things because that's just the way that our human brain works. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, I would say. Well, okay. First, of, let's just if anyone's listening who doesn't know what a pansexual is, um, we've got the definition up here on the screen, so I think it might be a good idea. I, I want to read it out to make sure I'm saying it correctly because I yeah. personally feel, as you can obviously tell. By the way, I'm speaking about this, like, not the most, like, comfortable with everything yet. I feel like I'm still learning. And I feel like there's a lot of learning going on in society right now. It's all being talked about, different genders, different labels, identity politics, all of this. And yeah. I actually think that there could be so much, like, tension around it. And a lot of people can get offended maybe like if you don't know this or you say something that's kind of wrong so I think like I'm really glad we're having this discussion mm -hmm. just to start and I so a pansexual someone who describes individuals that can experience sexual romantic or emotional attraction to any person regardless of that person's gender sex or sexuality and in my case also age <laughs> <laughs> Meaning I've had, I think the age gap between the youngest and the oldest person that I've kind of fallen for is like 30 years. I think I'm on the gap between them. Yeah, no, mm. fair. I, I think I'm actually also on the same train there. Yeah. Not quite as high, but close, very close. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh no, it's more than that actually, 20 years. Fuck. Excuse me, am I allowed to swear? Yeah, of course, of course, it's fine. Why not? Why not? Why the Dude, fuck? Fuck <laughs> um, the, the, age, the difference is actually 37 years. That's quite a lot. That's older, Limey. That's that's older than him. That's older than me. Like, I'm that's older than you. My age. It's older than you. Yeah. Same age as me. Ah. Yeah. Anyway, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I got involved there. One Your, thing I would love to add. The definition of the pansexual was good, okay, yes. We've got the definition out of the way. One thing I, I would love to ask is during that intro there, okay, wait, let, let me try and give a bit of background. So I feel like in the last year or so, 
like different genders have been have been coming up all the time, like nuance being defined and sexualities and all this. It's kind of I feel weird saying exploded in popularity, but I guess like just become more mainstream, more people are talking about it. Would that be fair to say? Yeah, I see. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. And so more normal even. It seems to me that people want to be defined in certain ways. So I find it really interesting that we've actually started this discussion with you, Emma, saying that you're like, well, I don't like this label and I don't like this label and kind of, and if I had to pick one, I guess it would be that. How, so I guess just interested, what, what causes you not to want a specific label? Yeah, I mean, I thought about this myself, and to be honest, I don't know. I don't know why that term bisexual made me cringe a bit. I preferred people to say that I was gay, or a little bit gay. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, that's what I say often. Yeah, I'm a bit gay, or I'm half gay, or I'm, depending on my mood, fully, whatever it is. Uh-huh. But I didn't like the, the term bisexual, and I still don't know why that is <laughs> but that's a bit strange why so many labels are coming up because mm -hmm. to be able to explain it in different ways because if you don't like a label like you definitely need to be able to change it mm -hmm. and to be able to describe yourself something more accurately like a little bit gay or or <laughs> half gay or something like that like whatever it is that could be another label um but if people are going to keep trying to label you as something being able to label yourself the way that you want to be labeled is probably why all of these labels have exploded yeah yeah and actually that's a fair point actually you're right because that is what it was it's because i and that when i first read read that term pansexual i was like oh that's what i am probably and i think exactly what you just hit upon was what it was is because for me the i what i am attracted to wasn't about gender it was about that emotional connection and for me, that emotional connection and therefore attraction, which is sexual, arises uh, from that emotional aspect, not because of something between someone's legs. So sure. then I was like, aha, that makes more sense for me. Yes. So actually, yeah, that's why I don't like, for, the, for me, the term bisexual. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, that's what we do. That's what we do on this show. Just changing <laughs> lives one show at a time. Like, is it? <laughs> and actually, for me personally, I think also the other label, and I for this one, I don't, I don't know why. I think probably it's because the cultural stigma when I grew up was the term lesbian or lesbo or something, which is mm -hmm. why I also prefer the term gay. A little bit gay or whatever <laughs> is that is that just like a sound thing or you don't like like the like history attached to lesbian both i think okay yeah something about the phonetics within the word make me not enjoy the term as much exactly okay fair strange i'm weird though that's at least something you both know about me <laughs> <laughs> okay so when Right, so, I, so I'm just, I'm straight, a straight white male. Uh, <laughs> but I have thought about, there was a time at university where I was like, maybe, maybe I'm bisexual. Maybe I could. <clears throat> maybe I could. Maybe I could. And now, like thinking about girls, I'm like, yeah, like there's that inner primal urge inside me that's like, ah, like, yes, this is great. But if I think about guys, like there's still a part of me that's like maybe, but a bigger part of me is like, ooh, like, oh, I don't know, like ah ooh. And part of me feels that that's actually maybe like social conditioning. In the like, I wouldn't say like my mum was like, you can be gay if you want to, son. Go, go and go and be gay and have loads of boyfriends. But like <laughs> at the same time, she wasn't like super negative against it. But so I'm interested, like. Well, both of you have said that you're into like guys, girls, whatever. So, how do you feel? Do you feel any different if you think about guys, if you think about girls, if you think about something like anything else? Yeah, how do you? Because, like, were you nervous the first time it happened? Like, 
yeah, I know that's kind of a weird, a long-winded question, but you get where I'm coming from. Yeah, yeah. I personally think a lot of it's cultural. Okay. Because if you look back at like the Gre ancient Greeks, I can't remember which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Millennia. Yeah, yeah. Like Jeez. women were pretty much there to have babies with, and the emotional and sexual relationships came from the other men. Mm. So. I think it's a lot of it's cultural. And I personally also think that's why you look around you, I don't know if you guys, guys have noticed this, but there's a lot more women who are, you know, trisexual, that they're willing or want to try with another girl to, to try it, literally, to see what it's like. And I think personally that this is because there isn't the same stigma around two women being sexually active together compared to two men being sexually active together. Because I've also heard exactly what you said from quite a few male friends who are a bit more, I don't know, let's say honest with themselves and a bit more open that they've been in that situation a few times and they're like, could I, could I not, would I, would I not? So I personally think it's a lot of it's cultural stigmatism. Well, speaking from one of my gay male friends in Berlin, uh, the amount of men that he meets off of Grindr that are in a relationship with a female uh, is basically 90% of the people that he has sex with. Whoa. Uh, okay. Yep. Yeah. So I think that it's just a lot more hidden uh, and not necessarily that it's girls doing this more often than guys. Mm. Uh, it's just that it's- Probably well, more openly, yeah, exactly. Because it's okay. But Berlin's also known to be gay. It's like, or she's not really, you know, she's gonna just go back to being straight or something after. This is quoted from my mom. Um, <laughs> <laughs> sexuality isn't a thing, it's not real. Yeah. Uh, you're either gay or you're straight. So, um, uh, thankfully, I went to an art school and was surrounded by the LGBT uh, community. LGBTQ. LGBTQ. Yeah. LGBTQ, actually. A. I think it's an A after now and a plus. Anyway, really? Plus for sure. Yeah. Yeah. What's uh, the Q for, by the way? Here. Queer. Oh. An asexual. That's Makes sense. What's queer then? Do we know? <laughs> the definition. Bear with us one second. And I'm really that, that describes individuals who aren't exclusively heterosexual. The term queer acknowledges that sexuality is a spectrum as opposed to a collection of independent and mutually exclusive categories. So yeah. trisexual. Everything. It kind of, yeah, it's like <laughs> a nice umbrella term. Yeah. <laughs> All of the things. All of those things. So we should just really be telling everybody that we're queer and just go from there. Mm. Uh, for me, I personally think it is more pansexual. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'm definitely queer, <laughs> but for me, because my sexuality is based on the emotional connection, which is why the pansexual is the more identifying factor. Hmm. Could you talk to us about your like, maybe transition isn't the right word, but how you kind of discovered that this is what you like and this is what you're into? It was slow, for mm -hmm. sure. I mean, it definitely started on that at school, snogging some friends when I was drunk mm. and that kind of thing. And a few more, more intimate moments, let's say, with a couple of girls. And then actually when I fully fledged and opened up to it, let's say, it was with my ex, who was a friend of, uh, at university. And we, we ended up being a couple for like two years. Mm. <clears throat> but before that it was more I never actually I think I have met people that I would have want, had sex with if the opportunity had come up mm. for sure but the opportunity never came up mm. like the most opportunities I had let's say because I'm generally not a chaser I'm like one of these people it just happens and these kind of situations just never happened and any situations that might have been able to happen with offers of threesomes and it was always 
threesomes I wasn't necessarily interested in with those people that were offering it. So, and then after um, me and my ex broke up, then I was kind of exploring that avenue much more uh, and much more interested because I must, it was like with women and with men, it's, it feels completely different. And I'm not talking about sex, I'm talking about uh, the emotional aspect of it. Hmm. And that was something, yeah, I wanted to explore more. Is there, is there any way to like, I don't know, I guess you can't really sum up all of your relationships in a few ways, but are, what are the key differences between dating men and women that you've noticed or like some, some specific things? Cause like I've never dated women. Um, I'm only mm. so like I'm actually just quite curious uh, to know what that that difference is since you have dated both. Well, actually, on one of the videos you guys did already, you highlighted one of the things that for me was a, a difference between dating men and women, and that's this expectation. Like with men, there's it, I have. I mean, I've had some fucked up situations, let's be honest, as well, mm -hmm. and not nice ones. <laughs> so that, of course, affects how you feel in certain situations. But also that expectation, it's like, it, it, there's often a lot, in, in my history anyway, I don't know if all women would say that, but, you know, I think most of the ones that I no would say this there's a lot of pressure and they have been pressured into doing things that they don't want to do mm -hmm. and that isn't like that with women and that creates a much more mm -hmm. uh, relaxed uh feeling simply in everyday life and it's not just like that first date or that second date or something that's like in any date that you ever have like i've never felt that pressure in the same way it's just that ability like women understand much more that uh, not to push, let's say. Yeah. Mm. So that was a big one. And actually one of the reasons in a way that I stopped pursuing men, I mean, not that I haven't, I have stopped, but like using these dating apps and stuff, I pretty much would only try and chat with women for this reason, because I just couldn't be bothered to deal with the pressure <laughs> as well. Which is interesting, actually, yeah. Yeah. I've never heard that before. Go on, sorry. I'm actually, like, I'm curious. So, like, what, what, what's the difference between um, when you're chatting with, say, a guy on a dating app versus chatting with a girl on a yeah. dating app? Because, I mean, I know what <laughs> the guy sends, but uh, uh, there's a lot of dick pics on my phone from years ago. Uh, <laughs> or, hey, babe, like, let's fuck. Want to fuck? Down to fuck? Fucking, yeah. yeah. Cute, like you know, zucchini or a cucumber. Wait, what is it? The eggplant emoji. There we eggplant go. Eggplant emoji. Yeah. Um, but yeah. I mean, how does it change okay. with girls Obviously. versus? Oh, I've never had that with girls. No. Well, I mean, I, yeah, I just I can't imagine sending a picture of my clit. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I, look at my micro penis. <laughs> 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 So erect for you right now. Yeah, <laughs> my so, clit is bigger than your micro penis. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, get out. Um, but like, what kinds of like are like are you the pursuer? Are you the one that that messages first? Yeah. Or are you like, how does that work? I, it definitely depends on the person. Not the dick pic thing and the sex pushing, <laughs> but the <laughs> but the uh, interaction part for sure. It depends. But I think, um, I like, what I, can I just go back actually, because what I just said about guys is, it sounded really negative, but it's also not negative. It's also nice that men, men are much more able to lead a situation. Mm. So when you're on a dating app, if they're a nice guy, they're often much more, um, they're just leading the conversation and the date. And girls, I have noticed that, want to be led a lot more, it seems. Especially the less, the more they go to the trisexual, bisexual, gay, it seems, from what I've experienced, it seems to change how pushy they are. Ah. And the more, the women who are a bit more just wanting to see, like, oh, okay, so you're, you're gay, 
they want to see what having sex with a girl is like, they are expecting you to do the work. I've noticed that, yeah. Mm. Okay. Whereas, uh huh? How, sorry, how do you feel about that? For me, it's completely new and it, it made me realize that actually I, that's how I know that I'm not a chaser is mm. because I, I don't know what I'm actually doing in that. I'm like, <laughs> so I, I initiate stuff, but it's like, okay, I'm actually trying to push this, but it's <laughs> not, I'm not any good at it. <laughs> Oh well, yeah, I'm shit at it apparently. So <laughs> you just both lie there, like, are you gonna initiate this? It's like I thought it was gonna be you. And it's like, I don't know. Like what am I supposed no, to No, but not like that. Like now <laughs> I mean like messages and stuff. Yeah. No, once it gets down to the nitty gritty, I'm very confident. It's not okay. to do that. Okay. okay, that's good. That's good. Okay. Just the inish. The inish. I'm very pushy when it gets done. <laughs> <laughs> Close off. <up>. Shut your mouth! <laughs> Just... <laughs> oh, I was gonna lower it a bit there, but it's okay. Oh. I went. Okay, wait. Going back, going back to Sam's question about what's it like with girls messaging girls on dating apps versus guys. That's what I was talking about. Is this part of it? Yeah, the initial. Oh shit! All ah, right, I didn't realize. Dating. I didn't He's Look so at this. drunk. So I'm too drunk right now. He's drunk on life. Drunk on life. Um, oh, okay. That makes sense. So, how have you have you overcome that challenge, Emma? Oh well, it's ongoing, <laughs> for sure. Okay. But also, like, I don't have much luck. I think you, we, us three, had this conversation once last year or something, or maybe Adam. It wasn't with you. It's was like I don't have much luck. Like I try, <laughs> but it doesn't really work for me because, like, I'm not. I don't go into the city here in Sofia. Like in, on the weekends, I'm always out of the city. So I don't really actually have much opportunity to meet new people. It's not like I go to gay clubs or something or even go out in bars much. <clears throat> because I'm so, I don't even meet women on an everyday level. So I have to use these dating apps and I don't get much luck from these dating apps. So pretty hit and miss. I've had some luck, of course, but. <laughs> not as much as <laughs> I would like maybe but then that also comes down to the people that I've met because I've not met the right people you know actually from these dating apps I've made more friends than I have relationships or sexual partners even friendship so. relationships mm -hmm. yeah without the sex without the sex <laughs> <laughs> but sometimes they can change. Sometimes <laughs> friendships can turn into a sexual relationship. Are you proposing? Can't they? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Whoa. Oh. Yeah, baby. <laughs> I was talking about you two, by the way, seeing as you're cooped up in quarantine for the next who knows how yeah. long. Sam wishes. Sam wishes. I'm just waiting. Wait. She's playing the <laughs> long. Game. Playing the long game. Playing that long game. Friendships <laughs> turning into more than friendships. She's gonna be playing it for several more months at least. <laughs> at least. <laughs> gonna be stringing her along. Oh yeah. She didn't even. She won't know what hit her. I. I, I can't until I. I can't until it <laughs> dies. <laughs> <laughs> she can't. She, she'll have no idea. You know. You know. On that topic. <laughs> on that topic. I, Sam is, is one of my like closest friends and like what am I trying like I, I'm not worried like with okay well basically I used to get friend zoned like all the time when I was a teenager right so I would like just be I, I would just be friends with girls but really I'd be secretly fancying them I'd be like oh like try and get into their pants and then like and then it and then I would like go for it and then they'd be like Ew! I'd be like, no. Um, yeah, 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 exactly. He's like, I know I will never like her that much. <laughs> but I just know that with Sam, I know with Sam, it's just not like that. And I know she's the same. I know she's the same with me. <laughs> right? Now, on a serious note, those things can change, can't they? Well, 
I mean, like, you can find. And I'm not talking about you two now. I mean, generally. Abducts you. Yeah. So, huh? yeah. I mean, you can fall in love with the person that abducts you. So there's always a chance. But I think the chances of that are literally. It's more likely that. I don't know. More likely that anything else could happen. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like an actual zombie apocalypse would actually start happening outside than Adam and I falling for each other. Yeah, like it's like close. like a zombie walking in the door right now and just yeah, biting like his hamster. dick off. Yeah, like, yeah. That's more likely than yeah. us ever romantically being into each other. Never gonna happen. Like never. I mean, I don't think there's enough alcohol in the world. <laughs> to comatose both of us into making that bad decision. <laughs> last man on earth, last woman on earth, we will just kill. Like no one will survive. Human erased, like gone. Gone, just forever. forever. You never come. <laughs> forever. Me thinks you just protest too much. Yeah, pretend, perhaps. Perhaps. We are secretly like in love. Yeah, we are. She's we actually just me along. we're gonna have sex right after this. Yeah, um, multi. Fucking you! I fucking knew it. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. Oops. It, maybe there should be a label for that. A label for like people who like to be friends first and then. Uh, what would be the opposite? Because I'm the opposite as a general. Mm. Opposite. So you like? Wait, you like or you don't like? Like to fuck. I want to be friends with the, my p p uh, partner, mm. but I hardly ever end up with friends. I've been in many sticky situations where I've had friends in love with me and chasing me, and I'm like, uh -huh. just doesn't work. Like it for me, somehow it often gets beyond that point. Mm. The only time was with the, my ex, who the the one I was talking about, my first gay relationship. Yeah, mm. we were friends for three years before we got together, okay. and that was a really weird jump for me personally. Mm. That's a lie. My first boyfriend was I was friends with, <laughs> but no, my first boyfriend I fell in love with the first moment I saw him. It just took us two years to get together. So, wow. So I, maybe I'm not lying. <laughs> Yeah, love at the first sight, that was. And love at last sight? Uh, with the other one, yeah. <laughs> wow, okay. Wait, so did we, yeah. I think that was a pretty comprehensive chat. What did we learn? What did we learn from this chat? Um, I've learned the biggest takeaway from me actually is that not uh, this may this may sound really ignorant, but not everyone wants labels. And I genuinely thought for the last year and a half, with all this kind of, I've just been seeing it so much in the news and stuff that <clears throat> that people do want them. But I think it's actually interesting to see the opposite case as well, and that just be like, well, I personally, I love the idea of like, look, I'm just me. I'm into who I'm into. I just do what I want. Um, and that's cool. I'm, I'm big into that and that, that there doesn't have to be a label. Um, so yeah, I think it's cool to hear your perspective, Emma, really. But I also think yeah. something else important that you brought up, which is, you know, don't just assign labels to people. Yeah. Maybe ask, if you want to label someone, ask them how they would like to be. How they identify, mm -hmm. yeah. Because that's super important and just going around and being like, hey, you're gay or you're, you know, you're bisexual or you're mm. whatever. It's just like, you know, it's very, they're very, you know, they're, they're, they're terms that are fine if somebody identifies that way, but not necessarily if they don't. So mm. going around and saying that to people is kind of weird. Like I wouldn't just walk up to Adam and be like, you're a straight white male. Mm. Um, I'd just be like, hey, dude, how's it going? Mm. Yeah. Yeah, it's true. but in a comedy. Because yeah. also, like we of course also only show a certain amount of ourselves, and it's it's similar to saying, "Oh, you are gay, or you are heterosexual, or you are this." It's similar to doing the same on a personality basis with people. It's like <laughs> screwing them down, and it's like, yeah, I think like you said, it's uh, probably better to find out what they actually are before you assume what they are for sure 
Mm. Like yeah. someone be like, you're an extrovert. You're, you know, you're a whatever. <laughs> like, yeah. labels. like just any labels that you assign to people. Like, label. I mean, we do this as humans naturally just assume things and we do label people. But before we start talking about them, I think it's just really important to ask them how they want to be seen and how they want to relate to the world. Mm. Yeah. Get yeah. to know them. Yeah, get to know them. Maybe an intimate level. Nobody knows. Get in their pants, get to know them. Yeah. yeah. Wow. Find that micro penis. Oh. <laughs> Constantly searching for <laughs> penis. I want to know how many times I've said micro penis in this entire video. <laughs> I'm actually. Comment, comment below if you counted the total number of micro penis set. <laughs> Whoever, utterances. Whoever, whoever gets the correct amount of micro penis uh, wins. We will wins a date with some. Take people. all the micro penis. <laughs> 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 okay. Um, wait. Final point I'd like to say for me is what is the best way then? Because as someone, so I feel like I want to be. I want to be as respectful as I can to everyone. Of course. And I want to, yeah, treat, you know, I don't want to offend anyone um, if they identify a certain way. And part of me feels that a lot of the talk about it over the last few years has made me feel like when I am talking to someone, I'm like, I, I need to find out if, if they're this or if they're that or, or whatever, even if I don't care or even if it doesn't really matter. It just seems like, it's been made a huge deal that, that they're all coming up all the time that like, is, is it important to know? Or, or does, it, does it matter? Do you get where I'm coming from? Well, I think I do, but I also think that's because you're from the snowflake generation and you, nobody wants to be offended. Whereas my generation, I'm 37 now, it's like, and I'm on this level, I'm very, from my father's side to the Dutch side, I'm very direct and don't really think about, of course you don't want to offend, you don't purposely want to offend someone, oh. but you also, by being direct, in my way of being, it's like you don't have to offend someone by saying the wrong thing by mistake or yeah. something like that. Whereas I do think your generation has more of that, uh, oh, I shouldn't say something in case it offends someone. Whereas my generation is more like, oh, I'm going to say this. And, uh, and then you go, oh, sorry, I didn't mean to offend if it offends someone. Hmm. To be honest, like, it's more... my modus operandi. I just feel, to be honest, it's, <laughs> it's mainly when talking about topics of gender and sexuality that I'm like, that I, I'm just like, I don't, usually I'm just like, I don't know. I just, I genuinely feel that if you don't know, uh, you should just ask, ask. like, que like questions are better than making statements about people or making yeah. about something. Like if you are uncomfortable mm. or you're unsure, always just ask, always yeah. ask. And people are generally like more open to talking about it, I think, mm -hmm. if you ask them questions rather than them having to say, because they might also feel uncomfortable about even saying, oh, you just offended me. They're probably not going to a lot mm -hmm. of the time because people are you know, not open to discuss things mm. on a, and an open scale <laughs> a mm. lot of the time. Yeah. Um, and I actually often appreciate someone asking. Yeah. Because I know that I'm not necessarily normal on any level. <laughs> and None of us I, are. if someone asks me, it means that they're trying to clarify their own way of thinking, not put me in a box necessarily. Mm. So I really enjoy, I'll enjoy it when people ask me because it feels much more like they're trying to understand a situation or yeah an identity and so I would say yeah personally for for you ask for sure. And what's a good what's the right <laughs> what's the right question to ask like how do you identify what is your sexuality like are they both fun are they both good questions? I would say so yeah. But it also okay. the situation. Like, I think you're smart. I think you can read it. <laughs> no, I genuinely, gen I feel like I'm smart. Yeah. Um, and like I can get things. But this is one thing that like 
Like in general, I know I said I, d I don't want to offend people, but at the same time, like I don't want to needlessly offend people. I think is the, is the best way to say it. Like I'm okay with having opinions and other people disagreeing and, and for people to be like, how dare he think like this or, or whatever. But like, I don't want to needly, I don't want to like be accidentally doing it. And yeah, anyway, yeah. If, I'm, if I'm fiscally conservative and I disagree with your socially liberal, like, I don't know, like, I, I think there should, the taxes should be low or whatever. Like, I'm happy to have that opinion, whatever. But, but I don't know, like, this just seems, I feel like there's a lot of tension around this. And I, I guess I want to learn, like, what's a good way to, to interact. So, so that's good. Yeah. yeah. Perfect. How do you identify? How do you, how would you uh, verbalize your <laughs> sexuality? I don't know. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. I think how would you identify is probably the best. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, cool. Sweet. Yeah. Cool. Any any part and comments, Anna? Mm. No, generally not. Uh, just that. Yeah, it's it's we can assume a lot with these identity term identity terminologies terms whatever you know what i mean mm -hmm. uh and it's only with those discussions that we can know what they really are mm. or how people connect with them so i think it is pretty good to talk about it yeah, yeah. and ask people about it okay. that's what i would say be free and open my pretties <laughs> fly 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 <laughs> Like my pretties, <laughs> and I think more people should explore their sexuality. That's for sure. Definitely, but that's a different topic, I would guess. Oh well, we'll, we'll be having you back, I'm sure. Yes, definitely. <laughs> <For the food. laughs> Sweet. All right. Well, with the microphone. With the microphone. Pardon? How many times <laughs> has microphone. it entered this conversation? <laughs> Ooh. Um, <laughs> All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today in our soon to be titled uh, discussion. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking forward to reviewing it and we'll send you a copy as well. And for anyone still listening, uh, please feel free to reach out to us if you'd like to be a guest on our show. Mm -hmm. um, we are still working out the kinks, but we're yep. kinking along. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for joining. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been a pleasure, Emma. Absolute pleasure. Would love to have you back again. Thank you for listening. Love you. Over and out. Love you. Uh, Over and out. Uh, uh.